Yeah, what about you? What was your main event experience like? It was great, yeah. Um, I ended up bluffing it off, to be honest. And then River comes a blank and I end up jamming and I get, it's probably the quickest call I've ever seen. They have the nuts, obviously, 10-9. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 825th episode of the Poker News Podcast. That's right, 825. I know I said that last week. I got my numbers mixed up, but this is officially 825. I'm Chad Holloway on the WPT Voyage, joined by a very special co-host, one Lucas Robinson, a.k.a. Robin Poker. Man, how about this cruise? You having fun? Yeah, it's the best. Living the dream, can't complain, Chad. Uh, poker not been going so successful, but... I keep saying to people, there's worse places to be busting tournaments, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's, you, we got poker action in the background. This is the uh, day two of the WPT Prime Championship happening here. We both played it. We both built some stacks early, uh, but didn't bag. That kind of, I mean, it sucks, right? Yeah, I mean, we both had similar 250K, which is quite a lot of chips. You start with 40K starting, right? Uh, but obviously, the turbo flights there. I played the day one C yesterday. And you could tell the difference between the turbo to the 40-minute plans. Yeah. But yeah, still no luck in the 40-minute plans, unfortunately. Yeah, uh, the 20-minute turbo to 40, it does make a difference. It was a, a big turnout, as was the main event. We're going to get into all of that in a little bit. But let's talk real quick the cruise experience as a whole. The poker's been great. Uh, both cash games, I've played a few of those. The tournaments, I think the numbers are probably better than they expected. Yeah, and, I mean, they reached the guarantees, right, right. Um, on both the, the main tournaments. Yeah, they, the action's been insane. I, I, this is my first kind of 5K, I'd say, live. Yeah, I think it was my first 5K live. There was someone straddling. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, that's, that's all you need to know is that someone straddling in a 5K buy-in. Like, yeah, the action was insane. It's funny because that happened at my table too with the reigning WPT world champion, Dan Sepio, who we're going to talk about in a little bit because he did quite well after he busted me, I might add. But, uh, you know, but before we get into all the WPT stuff, I want to ask you, my usual co-host, kind of England, was on Game of Gold, and so were you. Yeah. What was that whole experience like? Kind of was someone that I was probably closest with in the show as well. I spent a lot of time. It was obviously filmed in South Korea, so yeah, we went, went for a few meals, a few drinks with Kinda. She's she's an amazing, amazing person. Um, so yeah, I, to be honest, I couldn't think of many better people in poker there to have on the Poker News podcast. Yeah, so, yeah, she's 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 great. Um, yeah, the experience was mad to be honest. Obviously, like I said, filmed in South Korea, never been to South, never been to Asia before. Um, so the flow was out there. Obviously, spent a week and filming the show, um, just with like people that I grew up watching on on TV. Like it was a very surreal experience. And one, yeah, it, to be honest, it still doesn't. I was watching it back, going, "Is is this me?" Do you know, like? <laughs> I definitely suffer with like. Um, like with the imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome, one hundred percent. And this has been the first trip where people have been like coming up to me a lot and recognizing me and I'm like, it's not, I do like love meeting new people, but I, it's weird. I, I couldn't be a celebrity to be honest. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, and it is funny because I do feel there were certain people on the show who were, I mean, obviously anybody's going up against Negranu and Jason Kuhn and those kind of guys, which are our poker celebrities. There are some of the lesser known people, you know, and I think kind of was one of those yeah. people for a lot of people and yourself, but I also think there were certain breakout stars and I think you and kind of were, I think Olga was another and she's on the cruise, which was yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, what was it like, because you had to sit on it for like a year, right, before it aired, to sit on it and keep that secret, but then to actually sit down and watch yourself back. Yeah, it was, we couldn't, it was the biggest secret I've ever had to make, um, because they, they, we literally signed, yeah, a contract to say we couldn't tell anyone, right? right? So there's a lot of my friends and family that watched it and was like, ah, we now know why you're in South Korea, because obviously I, people are like, why are you in South Korea? It's such a random place to go on holiday, because <laughs> I brought my girlfriend as well. Um, so but I had to say we were on holiday and we were just traveling around Asia. So um, yeah, it was unbelievable experience. And obviously, yeah, it, I was I was like unknown. I'm, I'm a streamer, right? But I was pretty unknown in poker before that. Um, so to be on that show, and like, obviously, you know, it's going to be a big production when you rock up. It is a massive production. Um, but you don't know how many views it's going to get, right. right? You don't know how much like attention it's going to get. And like I said, this is the, being the first live event I've came to and people have started to recognize me. <laughs> yeah, like I said, it's, I don't think I'll ever get used to it, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, that, that is pretty cool. No, I asked kind of this, and I want to ask you the same thing. So sounds like there, season two is in the pipeline. Uh, you don't have any inside information, I'm assuming. None. And if I did, Chad, then you I probably couldn't say. Wouldn't say. But no, no, I don't. No, I don't. Well, well, the question is, uh, if you could pick somebody to be on the show, who would you like to see? Who do you think would make a good uh, competitor on Game of Gold season two? 
I think it needs to be, I think getting an influence, a big influencer on in terms of like a lot of numbers on social media to, to basically get it to a wider audience to get more people into poker, right? But someone that knows poker, I don't think there's any point in getting an influencer on that doesn't have a clue about poker. So in my opinion, the number one that I know is into poker and has a big following is Adam22. Yeah. I think he would be great. I think he's got the personality for it. He's a good player. Big audience, right? Um, it's no jumper podcast is is massive. So I think yeah, I'd, I'd really like to see Adam on on the show, and I'm and I'm sure he'd, he'd he'd go on the show, yeah. Yeah, well, it was awesome to see you on Game of Gold, and it's fun to see you here on the WPT Voyage, especially since you're a Poker News ambassador. And this is the Poker News podcast. I've worked for Poker News for a long time, but this is the first opportunity we've really gotten to hang out with one another. One of the things that you got to do, which I thought was pretty cool, was when we got off the boat in the uh, Grand Cayman, yep. uh, the Cayman Islands at uh, uh, Georgetown, yep. you got to do a tennis tournament. Mm -hmm. What was that uh, whole experience like? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I grew up playing tennis um, from ages of like 10 to 18. I moved to the Isle of Man from, from the UK and I just didn't play for like 10 years. So um, I just recently moved to Malta and I was like, you know what? Like poker was my biggest hobby, but now it's a job. Um, I needed a new hobby because mm. I needed, even though like I love playing poker, right? But it is a job now. Um, so I don't, I didn't have an, a hobby outside of that. So just to take my mind off things. So got back into tennis the last few months. Um, and I know I was going to play the pickleball originally because I didn't know there was a tennis competition, right. but then noticed there was a tennis competition. Yeah. So um, yeah, got Tony uh, first round to obviously run, run it. And I, Tony Dunst, who happens yeah. to just be a very established tennis player, from what I understand. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've not only run bad on poker, I've run bad on that as well. <laughs> uh, getting him in the first round, he ended up spoilers getting into the final, and yeah, he's a very good player. But uh, to be honest, I, I held my own six three. He beat me. Uh, we we played one set, um, but the temperature was crazy. I'm used to the cold UK weather, right? Mm -hmm. um, that was like 28 degrees Celsius. Um, yeah, super hot, but. I said to Tony, give me six months WPT championships in December. I'll play him again and I'll beat him. So I'm saying it on camera, Tony, let's do it. The challenge has been issued. <laughs> now the tennis was just one of many experiences that have been going on. There was the tournament, uh, a golf tournament that Matt Savage hosted. There was the pickleball that you mentioned that Vince Van Patten hosted. Uh, and then on board, there's been a lot of activities. Just last night was what's called Scarlet Night here on Virgin Voyage, which is just this big party night where everybody wears red, yeah. go out to the pool. Adam Pliska, the WPT family, they're out there dancing. Did you get to go to the Scarlet Night? I was playing the, the 1K yesterday, the Prime. Um, so I missed the when they were in the pool. I, I saw videos that yeah, yeah. I'm sure you can show a picture of yeah of them all dancing in the pool. But then I think there was like the after party that I went to and I had a few drinks. Not gonna lie, let let my hair down a bit. Uh, but yeah, it was it was a very fun night. Well, we're gonna talk more WPT Voyage Poker in just a moment. But I want to thank our sponsor for this episode, and it of course is WPT Global, who right now is saying no rake is better. Uh, the WPT Global has scrapped the rake on all tournaments through April. Uh, last month in March, they were doing 100% rate back so that they could use that rake uh, to fund some massive free rolls. But throughout April, WPT Global players buying into tournaments will see 100% of their buy-ins going towards the prize pool because WPT is scrapping tournament rake for four weeks from April 1st. So right now through the 28th, if you want to learn more, look up WPT Global on Poker News. You can also get a deposit bonus. All right, another fun activity that was on the WPT Voyage really kicked off things. It was the very first night. It was the pajama party slash meetup game. Now, there was a little uh, hiccups with registration and some long lines that first night. But once they got it ironed out, players got to sit. They got to have some fun. And some of these, I mean, people really went to heart. Like, usually in these sort of things, I'm like, oh, maybe one in five, two in five people yeah. are actually going to dress up, but it seemed like 100% of people were wearing pajamas. Yeah, some of the outfits were crazy. I thought we done well. We had um, Poker News pajamas. Oh, I brought some. We got to show the these off. So the WPT here, I'll give you these. What are those? The pants or the shirt? That's the, that's the shirt. The WPT family made us custom Poker News pajamas to wear during the Poker News meetup game. So I thought that was pretty cool. Very unexpected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were comfy as well, to be honest. I was, I was playing in them. Um, but yeah, I, I, like you, I expected people to maybe bring some pajamas, but people had like custom WPT <laughs> ones with like some of the WPT ambassadors and stuff with their faces on, like ones of Vince and stuff, which I'm sure we can, we can show. Yeah, it was... 
it was an amazing night. It was even even like obviously you said about the hiccups and and the being the long lines. The long lines allowed you to like socialize with people and like meet new people. And I think that's what this voyage at live events you do meet a lot of new faces and new people, right? But you are mostly just playing poker, so you only get to rarely speak to the people that you're playing on the table. Whether it's here, you're like you're meeting new people at dinner, you meet new yeah. people at these activities. Um, it's that for me that that's been one of the best things about this. Yeah, yeah I wholeheartedly agree. I think with the the pajamas in particular, uh, I like the Vince shirts that you mentioned. I know Lance Bradley from the WPT had some custom made, and it's like a joke for Vince. And I thought they turned out awesome. Like I would buy one yeah, yeah, if yeah. they were available for sale. Uh, you had uh, Ben Valder and his wife Amber. They actually won Andrew Nimi's giveaway to come oh, wow. on the cruise, and it was due in part because of a video they had made custom pajama pants. So Amber was wearing these black pajama pants with a picture of her husband's face on it. And Ben had some pajamas made that featured Lynn Gilmartin, <laughs> who uh, he, she's a redhead and so is his wife. And there was a whole play on like, you know, oh no, that's you, but it's really Lynn Gilmartin. Uh, I thought their costumes or their pajamas uh, were, were pretty cool. That's and uh, you know, yeah, just everybody getting into the spirit of it was a great way to kick off the cruise. Um, I ran into Adam Pliska in the dining area earlier today. You know, shook his hand and just said, hey, this is, this is pretty cool, yeah. right? He has a vision and Maybe it doesn't always work, but the WPT seems to be hitting on more than they miss, right? The WPT World Championship, yeah. the WPT Voyage has, you know, there has been some hiccups, no doubt, but I think from my perspective, this has been a lot of fun and it's been a success. As you said, they're hitting their numbers. Yeah, yeah, 100%. And like, it's just a unique experience and I'd obviously recommend it to anyone if they do it again next year. Um, that was the whole thing with me with Poker News, like when I can like work with brands such as WPT Global, right? I'm, I'm here doing like filming with do WPT Global and, and the documentary. Um, I've been really enjoying playing on, on, on actual the, the site, but also a big factor was going to these WPT events. I grew up watching these WPT events and to be like, I quit my job like three, four years to, to do this full time. If you would have been telling me four years later, I'd be sitting here on a WPT voyage playing poker, like meeting some of the crazy big names that I have it's, yeah, it's, it's I sometimes do pinch myself I'm like is this real <laughs> well you just mentioned it this documentary that you've got going on uh, WPT Global uh, tell the the viewers and the listeners a little bit about what it is that you're doing what you're on the ship and then you know what the plan is in the future for those episodes yeah 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 sure so we're basically just doing a documentary um, just portraying what the experience is like on a WPT voyage so Prime example, when I heard that we were potentially coming on this, I went on YouTube and tried to find some content about the ship and I couldn't really find much because obviously this, they, this is the first time they've done it. They right. did do like kind of like a trial one last year, which was like not as big, um, but there wasn't really content. So our idea was to do a documentary and show every aspect of the cruise. So let's say it happens again next year, then people can watch the documentary and go, oh, okay, that's interesting. And then they can see it from a poker player's perspective. Mm -hmm. But obviously, even if you're not a poker player, showing the activities you can do, the food, doing a lot of food reviews, um, big foodies. So. Yeah, it's, it's been a lot of fun. The only thing missing is a deep run, Chad. That's, that's the only <laughs> no, thing right? I need. So today's the day. Today's like, the day. You always come into these things and you're like, in the dream world, the fairy tale, you like win the main, you win the WPT Voyage yeah. main event, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, but you get to do some fun stuff, as you just mentioned. And also, you're going to be making an appearance on another show, the Only Friends podcast, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, to be honest, uh, obviously, we talked about Game of Gold. They they had nothing but high, high, like great words to say about me on the show. And I've been a big fan of, of the show, so... To hear that, I, yeah, every, every time they basically done a podcast, they done a podcast review in uh, their, each episode, mm -hmm. and yeah, they talked highly of me, so I, yeah, I can't wait to go on that tomorrow and obviously, yeah, delve deep into, obviously, Game of Gold and, and hearing kind of their stories as well, yeah, it'll be good. Yeah. Well, let us talk about the WBT Voyage main event. It's $5,000 buy-in, a million-dollar guarantee. And I'm not going to lie, like in the weeks leading, uh, weeks and months leading up to the cruise, I'm like, that's that's going to be pretty lofty. You know, you, you hear about people booking, people who are going to go, maybe not go. Ended up needing 200 runners to hit that million-dollar guarantee, and they got 293 in the main event, which I thought was great. I think I set the initial line at 222. Uh, so I think that turnout is something everybody should be pretty excited about. How about you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I like I heard people say, like, it's probably not going to be like value um, in terms of the tournaments on here on the cruise, but I think it's been the complete opposite. I think like we talked about people straddling in a 5K, like reaching over a million guarantee in a 5K on a cruise ship. Like the fields have been so good. And obviously for, for next year, if they do it, 
um, it's definitely a lot of value on the ship, to be honest. I thought my, so I played in the championship event. I know you did too. My table on day one was a very interesting one because there were like two or three, what I would consider pros, very yeah. tough competition. And then three or four, like, I don't know who they were, Club WPT yeah. qualifiers or something. Like they said, this is literally the first tournament I've ever played in. Wow. Uh, which it makes it a very interesting dichotomy at the yeah. table, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but I thought, and they were having fun. Everybody was having a blast. I unfortunately was fairly card dead throughout the day. Yeah. Uh, eventually Dan Sepio gets moved to my table. I shove my last 10 bigs from uh, the big blind with a six of hearts. Yeah. He calls in the small blind with ace eight and the good news was it was all face cards on the flop the turn was a uh, was a nine so it looks we're chopping right now yeah. our ace highs are chopping but this is the wpt world champion we're talking about <laughs> and the river is still to come so you know that eight's coming and the eight does hit and uh, dan sepio gets to collect my chips but he puts them to good use because he goes on to make the final table and ends up finishing in fifth place for seventy five thousand dollars so i don't know i thought it was pretty cool to see the reigning wpt world champ make a run in this as well when you see that, Chad, because I, I had a conversation with this with um, with someone on a, a previous event. When you see that someone that knocked you out ends up going to final table of the event, do you what, 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 how do you feel from that? Is I, it do you see it as a good thing or a bad thing? I th I see it as a good thing. Yeah, okay. you know, like I'm like, all right, they're, they're a good player. They put my chips to good use. Yeah. They didn't just go punt them or not, uh, donk them off in a couple hands later or something. That would make me feel worse. I think. Yeah. Are yeah, you yeah. in the same boat or you think the opposite? You um, you like I want to see them go down. I want to see them bust. No, if they're a nice guy, which which he, he is, right, and he's a good player. Yeah, I think it's more like when you, I think it. Let's say if it's in a massive pot. Let's say foul two tables or, or on the bubble or something, and, and someone absolutely punted off into you, and then you see them like go on to win the event. It's like, it's like oh, that could have been me. You know what I mean? Yeah, like that, yeah. that, that's the thing. I think that's the spot. But sounds like a standard hand, obviously that you played, and obviously he's a very good player. So yeah. What about you? What was your main event experience like? It was great. Yeah. Um, I ended up bluffing it off, to be honest. Um, yeah, Ace Ten. I've been I've been studying a lot of like. Um, donk leading um, out or kind of betting turns on like low boards so I've obviously let's say it comes I think my my, my mom was like five six seven um, from the big blinds on my multi way so it checks around and then turn comes a blank and I have ace ten I block the nuts which was the ten nine so I end up betting part and we get called and then river comes a blank and I end up jamming and I get it's probably the quickest call I've ever seen they have the nuts obviously ten nine and um, but yeah and the way I'm like starting to think about things like Previously, I would have been upset that that would have happened, but with my specific hands, there was a misflush draw on the turn, and I didn't block the misflush draw. I blocked the nuts. I blocked aces. Um, so I'm starting to think about the game in a lot more like clearer way. Um, so when I do make plays like that and it doesn't work out, I'm like, well, at least I'm trusting what I'm studying, right? Right. And trusting what my coach is telling me, and I don't feel as bad. Whether it's previously, let's say a bust in a bust a five k, bust a ten k, to a big bluff then uh, I'd be pretty devastated. But I think that's when I'm getting better as a poker player, Chad, is like it's, I'm becoming a bit more numb to, let's say, when I, when I do make kind of, obviously, not bad players, but yeah, it, it stuff doesn't work out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, a couple of players who did well. So Fareed Yatin, who is a absolute crusher, makes the final table as the chip leader, but he ends up busting in fourth place for 100K. And then at that point, the final three players worked a deal. Uh, those players were Austin Sir, Carlo Baserto, and Aram Ognian. And they work a deal. E each lock up uh, around 200K a piece. Left, uh, I think it was 34,000 to play for, plus the championship. You get your name on the Mike Sexton's Champions Cup, 10,000 seat into the WPT World Champion at the end of the year but I did they did something I liked uh, because once you strike a deal a lot of the pressure's off right yeah but some people still play it out and it could still take many hours yeah. they said no 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 we're on a cruise ship we struck a deal let's just get this thing over with they decided to do some flips they're just gonna go all in you know blind uh, for see who wins the title and the first one RM Ognian triples up he was short and triples up so there's Sobel then very next hand he gets it in with deuces yeah I'm all in oh you're all in I'm all in I'm all in <laughs> All in? Yeah. Okay. Oh, a pair. All right. A little pair. Oh my god. So you guys live, are super live, live, live. Oh, I nice. lost. How much is it? I feel like I'm gonna knock you out and then. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Oh. 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 Jeez, guys. That was a quick one. Hey, 
Yeah. Scores the double elimination. So your champion for the WPT Voyage is Aram Agnian, $214,245. It was it was cool to see you know to see it uh, come down you know these guys chop it up and then do the flips you know I think he even said in his post winners interview like eh, you know it doesn't it, I'm happy to win but it, there's a little asterisk it doesn't feel like a super big win because you know we chopped and we did the flips but I mean a win's a win he's his name is on the Mike Sexton's Champions Cup they must have had respect for each other because obviously egos come into the mix and it's like yeah you've had a chop up you wanna you wanna have your name on the trophy right you wanna be the first ever WPT Voyage <laughs> main event champion so. They must have had respect. They must have all been very good players and respected each other's games. Because yeah, I thought it was wild when I saw that they flipped for it. But like I said, yeah, they, they must have all been very, very good players. To, it might have been late as well. And, and they might have been wanting to yeah, right. go, go to go to a party, go go and get some food or whatever. So. Yeah. And uh, so in the interview, uh, Agnian said, you know, he had come close to winning events in the past. But this was his first major victory. I think he's finished runner-up for a WSOP bracelet on two wow. different occasions. He was just over at the Triton in Jeju, I believe it was, where he had, he won almost a million dollars. He didn't win any tournaments, but he had a really good series. And so here he comes and he gets this flagship victory, uh, I think is very cool. We don't know who wins the WPT Prime yet because yeah. it's taking place yeah. behind. Uh, by the time this, this show comes out, there'll be a winner. You can go to pokernews.com and see our winner recap. Uh, and I'll try to link to it in the show notes as well. Let's move on. Let's talk. Uh, let's talk. You're a Poker News ambassador. Yeah. Give the uh, the listeners, the viewers, an idea of what that means. What do you? What do you? What's your role with Poker News, and what do you do for us? Yeah, yeah, sure. So it's a mix between like streaming and, and going to live events. So basically, it's working with Poker News as partners, um, which currently is WPT Global, um, Poker Stars, 888 Poker, and Paddy Power Poker. So. I basically do exclusive streams, so I do um, 16 exclusive streams, so I'll do at the moment like 6 WPT Global streams, 4 Pokestars, uh, 4 888 and 2 Paddy Power, So, and then I'll go to live events for, from them partners as well, so to um, start the year I went to like an IPT um, in Galway um, with Paddy Power, obviously here um, I'll potentially go to an EPT this year and uh, potentially an 888, so yeah, it's. I played online for three, four years. Those I don't know. I'm a, I'm a streamer, right? So, um, done it. Quit my job to do crazy challenge, a thousand hours in a hundred days, um, and I just kind of not had enough of online poker. But I was starting to fall in love with live poker a bit more. So when Poker News obviously came to me with 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 an idea and with it with a kind of contract to travel the world more, to play more live, it excited me because um, obviously people um, were kind of like. How come you left GG, right? Um, which I left left them on good terms. They're amazing people. They obviously give me a massive opportunity with Game of Gold. But I just felt like the, I needed to change. Sometimes in life you just need to change. And um, GG was mostly just online streaming. Mm -hmm. Whether this is, I mean, coming to yeah, right. being on the WPT <laughs> voyage, like um, I think uh, I, I made a great decision. And obviously. We've now got two new ambassadors, which uh, I'm, I'm sure we can now talk yeah, about. Yeah, that's a great segue into it. So you were the only person on the Poker News Ambassador team, but two more have joined you. And I'm, I'm excited because one is based in Canada, one's based in the United States here. Uh, Kyle Anderson yeah. is the Canadian, and Keith Becker is uh, well known. He used to be a Poker Star sponsored yeah. uh, ambassador in Pennsylvania, but he is now with Poker News. He is Accidental Grenade on Twitch. Kyle Anderson is Kyle Anderson Poker. Uh, both of these guys are very experienced in the online world, in the streaming world, and I'm really excited to have them on board as a Poker News ambassador. Yeah, they're great guys as well. Like they've they've always been so nice mm -hmm. towards me personally. Um, yeah, great streamers. And uh, yeah, I, to be honest, I, I couldn't. I, I know obviously they were doing work with Poker News previously. Um, but yeah, to have them as as part of the team and potentially do content together in the future, whether it's online or live events, is yeah, it's exciting. Well, I understand those guys are going to be at the World Series of Poker this summer, doing some behind the scenes content, short form content. Are you going to be at the World Series of Poker this summer? I will. I missed it last year, and I have really bad FOMO, if I'm honest. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm going to probably just come for the main events because, like I said, I'm yeah, I'm uh, contracted to do exclusive streams, so I probably couldn't come for more than more than a week. But I'm going to plan on book my whole stay for the whole of the main event because yeah I'm winning it this year Charlie. good yeah that, that, no that would be great content right you, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I, play, I played it twice and my dad who now obviously works with poker, for poker news as well he we played it for the first time together that was a bucket list thing for us he cashed I didn't so my dad those that know my dad's like he even if I won the WSOP main event Chad he would still say he's a better player poker player than me so 
Um, yeah, I really need to cash and have a deep run this year. I, I'm going to give your dad credit because he is a tough poker player. We do these poker news uh, monthly home games, right? Yeah. And it he's won some, I've won some, and it seems like every time he and I are the ones that are going deep yeah. and battling with one another, and he's good. He like, loves a ballet. He grinds more than me. Uh, well, he used to, you know what I mean, when, when we were playing online, when we were like... But I, I, when we go to the w, um, well, WPTs and WSOPs, um, sometimes I'm like, right, I'll have a day off here and I'll just relax and it'll save me for the for the next event. He's like, no, I'm going to play the, if there's not a bracelet event, I'm going to play the, the daily deep stack, you know what I mean? And obviously, yeah, the, this year, obviously we've got the daily deep stack, the poker news events, right? right? Um, but I actually chopped the daily deep stack, I think 250. Um, I think that was maybe my first or second year. We actually played together in that event, me and my dad. Um, so I'm definitely excited to play more of those as well this year. Yeah. Uh, for those wondering, the w, uh, WSOP, the Poker News Deep Stacks Championship, is a $600 bracelet event. Poker News branded bracelet event. But we're also taking over the Daily Deep Stacks. We're doing the Daily Deep Stacks Challenge. Now, there are buy-ins, $200, $250, $400 Daily Deep Stacks every day at the World Series of Poker. And from May 28th through June 24th, Poker News is going to offer a leaderboard. And each week... Those at the top of the leaderboard, the 10 point leaders, so top 10, if you're on that leaderboard, you're going to win a seat into the $600 Poker News bracelet event. That means there's going to be over 40, I think 40 uh, seats available uh, via that. So it pays to play the Poker News Daily Deep Stacks at the World Series of Poker. And to be honest, the, the, that's amazing value, but the, the Daily Deep Stacks and, uh, are of amazing value in itself. Right. Like I chopped that one heads off, uh, I think it was like 15K. So for a two hundred and fifty dollar buy-in, like that's pretty, pretty. And, and I know it gets even bigger than that. It obviously depends on how many people right. play them, right? But obviously, then there'll be probably bigger numbers because of this extra value as well. So, yeah, really good structures as well. Uh, I just really like them when you busted, let's say, a WSOP event, and there's there's not much. Obviously, there's other casinos you can go and play, but um, if you're staying in in Paris or around about Paris. Um, really good fun. It, it reminds me similar to these type of events, people having drinks, having good times. So yeah, that, that's going to be a good one. Absolutely. Well, I know you've got a tournament you want to get to. For those listening and watching, if they want to keep on top of your poker adventures and exploits, where's the best place they can do that? So at live events, I actually do Instagram stories. Um, so follow me on Instagram, Robin Poker. But obviously in general, I'm on Twitch, uh, streaming four or five days a week. Um, yeah, at Robin Poker. So Robin Poker on everything. But yeah, <laughs> you can find me streaming online, Robin Poker on Twitch. And and then when I come to these live events on Instagram. Awesome, man. Well, thank you for taking the time. This has been the Poker News Podcast, episode 825, sponsored by WPT Global. We will be doing another episode from the WPT Voyage next week. And until then, we'll keep a seat open for you.